Hey everyone, welcome to the very first episode of the Questioning Podcast, where we look at how the process of questioning can influence not only our own lives, but also the lives of others. And today I have a very special guest in my first episode, which I'm very excited to have. Uh, so that's uh, Raymond Moringa. Yes. I got it. Yeah. Uh, of the Dreamers Association. From the Dreamers Association, yeah. And uh, I won't say much about it, because you're here, so you can have a, an opportunity, you'll have the opportunity to uh, tell more to the audience about what it is, okay. but uh, the few words that I thought about introducing it is uh, it's a project which is making a real difference in Kenya. Yeah. Which is very cool, very awesome. Yeah. So uh, we'll get into many areas uh, for various questions, but uh, before we head into the questions, uh, how would you introduce a person to what is the Dreamers Association? The Dreamers Association is an association, non-benefit, non-profit mm. association, mm. which um, helps uh, children and women in Africa. Mm. So I created this association after I passed a very hard life, and I I I want to give uh, opportunity to the children and women so that they can have a bright future mm. in their life. Yeah. Uh, we had a chance to talk to each other a couple of times, and I read a, little, uh, a bit about the whole project. Yeah. Uh, so there's a, and I also read about your story, which That's is it. a very interesting story too. Yeah. So I'm sure we'll, we'll have to check that, that as well. Uh, but one of the things which, uh, in a way, it shocked me, but also when I thought about it, I realized it, it kind of makes sense. But that was the fact that uh, you mentioned in your story that in Kenya. Uh, a lot of families don't see the importance uh, or don't recognize the importance of education. So is that true? Yeah. Uh, yes, back uh, they didn't know the importance of education. Right now, I can say the the majority of the big number of Kenyans wants to send their children to school. Mm -hmm. But the problem is um, uh, how, mm -hmm. you know, they are poor, they don't have money to send them their children at school. That is the big problem with them. Because even uh, it costs, that's why I can say that they don't see, because they don't have the money to pay for the school fees. Mm -hmm. So it's like, um, if they don't have money, it's like uh, their children will be at home. They won't go to school. Mm -hmm. So that is what my thoughts were. Why should the children stay at home if they have the rights for education? So I decided to create the Dreamers Association. Yeah. Uh, before we get more into the Dreamers Association, just to look at your own story. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, it makes me very happy to hear that. So it seems that education is becoming more recognized in Kenya. <coughs> but when I read your story, that was a while ago. Yeah. You actually, the case in your family wasn't like yeah. that. So how was it? Yeah. Okay. I've been living in a very difficult um, situation in my life. It wasn't that good, you know, because even my education was a problem because my parents had no money to send me to school. So it was like um, during my primary education, it was like a uh, I go to school during the holidays, I have to go and work to get school fees. So it was very, very, very hot. So uh, I, I didn't even complete my studies, you know, because I went, when I, I completed in 2003, I completed my primary education, I have to join a secondary school. So because in Kenya we have um, a 844 education system, it's like uh, you have eight years of primary education, you have um, four years of secondary uh, education, and then you have four years for university. So I, and I completed my primary course, my prom, uh, primary education. I enrolled myself with uh, secondary school. But uh, in secondary school, you pay more uh, than what you are paying in primary school. So it was like uh, during my holidays, I have to go to work and get the school fees, but the, I couldn't get a good job to make for my payments for the whole uh, four years. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I just uh, enrolled myself for only two years, and then I broke 
from school. I, I, did, I couldn't continue my studies. So it was very, very, I, I didn't like it. I didn't like it because I, I, I wanted to study because uh, I was looking forward. I, I wanted to become someone, yeah. So it's not my wish that I broke from, from my studies. So my parents could not help me. So I didn't have any other ways. I, I, I broke from school and then that was that. I started um, searching for a manual job. That's a manual job with all skills is very difficult. So it's like uh, you are doing the hardest job, but what you get in return is just uh, something. It's a bread for the. Uh, it's a daily bread. It's just for the day. Then tomorrow you have to go again. So it was very, very, very hard to me. Yeah. Taking a bit more time again with your story, uh, I'm just trying to. To figure out yeah. what it was because it's so different from how I grew up or yeah, I yeah. guess most people around me grew up. It's almost a different world. But uh, so in terms of education, it almost sounds like it was your initiative to to to, to go to school, or or did your parents uh, encourage you to go to school? And so how how did initially how did that initially happen? Okay, at first I wanted to go my to school, mm-hmm. though even. Our parents didn't see the importance of going to school, mm. but my thought was to go to school, to study, to get education. How did that happen, though? I'm curious. Like, it's like, like uh, I had my uh, okay, my neighbors. Mm-hmm. I saw them my childhood were going to school, mm-hmm. so it's like I got motivated to go to school. Mm-hmm. So because I saw them, others who were who were having uh, good jobs, mm-hmm. so I said no, I should be someone to change my family because we are in a poor poor, poor mm. situation. Mm. So I said, it, it's myself. I should work hard to struggle in life so that I can change my family. Mm. Yeah, that's I was uh, motivated to, go, to to have the education. So I wanted really to go to school. Yeah. I, I find that so incredible and on, on two levels. And one is, as I mentioned, this, this podcast that I'm just starting, I call it the questioning podcast. And we don't have to focus on the, the word questioning that much, but but I'm fascinated by how sometimes it's important to not take things for granted and to sometimes ask, mm-hmm. so is this the right way or could this be better? And uh, one thing which is interesting for me is that when I look at, uh, well, I come up from I come from Europe, uh, first world world country, and although Lithuania, my country, it was behind comparatively, but still, it's it's you know it's, yeah. it's a good, it was a good life. And, yeah. and but the school myself and my friends. Mm, I would, 90% of us, if not more, would feel like, ah, oh, we need to go to school. I hate school. I don't want to go to school. You know, we would take it for granted. We wouldn't appreciate it because we'd be like, why are they forcing us to go to school? We wouldn't see the value behind it. Although I did see it eventually as I grew up. I was like, oh, it's good. I know how to read and this, but we take it first for granted. But for you, the situation was very different. Yeah, my, uh, this, my situation was different because um, it's like um, here, I have seen, um, I've been traveling for some other countries. I've seen how you live maybe in Europe, I you know how that, because um, it's uh, like um, uh, yourself, you, you awake in the morning, you can even open a fridge <laughs> and <laughs> things are there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, in Africa, it's not that we um, we still have a problem of um, searching for the stomach, you know, daily. Mm-hmm. So it means that uh, if I have something to eat today, maybe tomorrow I don't have. Yeah. So it's a uh, it's um, continuous daily. So it's um, it's very different from here. So because here you can get most of things, but in uh, Africa, it is very hard. So if um, it is a big problem, if you don't have something to eat and you don't know where you're going to eat, to get it. Mm-hmm. So that's why it motivated me to, 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 to in study, in mm-hmm. studies, yeah. But again, that motivation, which was the second thing that fascinated me, came from you. Like, because I, I'll just very quickly say, again, in, in the world that I grew up in, in the environment, my parents would have to force me to go to school. Yeah, like, yeah. You have to go to school, you have to learn. And, and me and my friends would be like, no, we don't want to go, we don't want to learn. And, and it's crazy. You know, yeah, it's crazy. 
we have a lot of uh, children and um, in Kenya, mm -hmm. in Africa, the most part of Africa, because the, it's like the old poor, you know. So we have a lot of uh, children, they need education, they really need the education. The problem is that um, how, yeah. yeah, how, maybe they go, they want, they are motivated to go to school, but the problem is that how, mm -hmm. they don't have money, yeah, to continue. So. That was my thinking. So I came, if I can uh, create something, I can get a sup uh, some support from mm. well wishes from friends. Mm. I can help. I didn't go to school, but still, mm. I can help someone mm. to get where she or he wants, you know? Mm. So that's one of my uh, thoughts. And I said, no, I have to do some something because if you won't take a step, then nobody will take will take the step. So, if we, I want, I see that there is a difficulties. I see there is some problems. If you don't take a step, it means that the the problem will be always be there. Yeah. So um, this is why it motivated me and say oh, it's okay. If uh, I didn't have the fortune for education. But I thank God that I have the brain to think even for uh, the other children that uh, I can make them to have a bright, bright, uh, bright uh, future. So um, I'm always thinking and I'm saying uh, the, the world should be equal. Everyone can, uh, every child should get whatever he's, he or she is rights for. So I am very eager to Sooner or later, go to move to the uh, Dreamers Association. Yeah. But just before to finish uh, getting a whole picture of your own story, uh, so you mentioned eventually you have to uh, quit school, yeah. go to manual, uh, manual work, and but what happened next? Like, uh, did you, did, like, what? How how did the gap between that and the Dreamers Association happen? Okay, <laughs> it's um. It's like when I uh, I dropped out from school, mm. I started looking for um, for some mm. manual jobs, and um, I struggled to do that job because you know even in life you have to struggle. If you um, you want something, you have to work for it. Mm. You have to put all your efforts in it. Mm. So I said it's okay. I have to. I, I have to be myself and do something with the little skills that I have, with the little knowledge that I have. Mm -hmm. But I should live in this world. The world is very hard, but I'm born in this world. Mm -hmm. So I should be myself and struggle to make it in life. So I did a lot of uh, manual jobs, like uh, I was cycling like a bicycle with uh, sacks of uh, ch uh, chuckers, you know, to send like, uh, to go um, like uh, 30 kilometers to sell them. So this was the job that I could have with, with, without scares, you know. So um, I did this job and um, I remember a friend of mine came to me and said that if you are interested, there's a, a job you can train somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I said, what's that? And I said, um, it's um, uh, to be a cook in kitchen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was like uh, the hard job that I'm always doing and I can't be somewhere. But the, the, the first question I asked was, uh, um, uh, so what do they need? Experience, maybe education level. And um, he told me that I can do, I could do with my uh, education of primary. So I, I took a first step to go there. So I went to the, it was a hotel, Mombasa. And uh, I got the chance. So they offered me the chance and uh, they said I can train to be a, a cook. So that's why, that's where I started my, my training. Yeah. And uh, I trained there for um, two years without any pay. Yeah. So how did you manage that? Okay, it's like um, 
it was uh, difficult because I didn't have any pocket money. I didn't have money uh -huh. to spend. But uh, what was maybe good to me is um, the hotel was offering uh, like everything, uh, breakfast, uh, lunch and dinner. Because it's like I was uh, to work eight hours in that hotel. But uh, I asked the manager if I can work the whole 12, uh, 12, 12 uh, hours during the day. But it was like, no, we, you have to work eight hours. But yeah. he didn't know what I want. But I wanted to stay there even more longer, but I can have even the dinner there. <laughs> yeah, so it's like a trip, but I wanted it to, um, to train for 12 hours instead of eight hours. Mm -hmm. But uh, what I looked myself was uh, to have the breakfast, mm -hmm. lunch, and dinner there. Smart man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, I stayed there for two years, and then um, I got my certificate mm -hmm. of being a cook. And they first said they offered me a contract of six months. Mm -hmm. I worked there with them mm -hmm. for six months. And then a low season came because in Kenya we have a um, low season, meaning that um, it's, um, we have the season which uh, tourism season, mm -hmm. and we have a season uh, uh, like we don't have any uh, tourists. So mm -hmm. that season, all hotels are going, uh, being closed. Mm -hmm waiting for the other season. Mm. So um, I worked there for six months and then uh, we closed the hotel mm. and we went home. So the six months that I was working there, I tried to, to save mm. so that I can have some money to spend up mm. to when they open again or maybe I can use what I have um, saved mm. for to such a, other, other jobs. Mm. So um, I went away from there, but I had a certificate. Mm. That uh, was a little, uh, a little uh, stair that I had there. Mm. So um, I started uh, looking for other jobs somewhere else with my um, certificate. And uh, because I was a cook, you know, in uh, Kenya, the place that I stay in Watamu, we have a lot of private houses. Mm. So. In these uh, private houses, uh, actually, if they built, the first person they need is the cook. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So I got a job mm. in a private house, which mm. are Italian. And um, I, sta I started working mm. with, with them. And I was a good cook. Mm. So they liked my, uh, my, my service. Mm. So it's like they took me as a permanent mm -hmm. there. So it's like, oh, hallelujah, I have a job now. <laughs> Though the payments was not uh, all that good, mm. but uh, it was, uh, uh, it, was uh, it was something. Sure. Yeah, it was something. So I worked there for some years. And then um, uh, they, sold, they sold that, uh, that place. Mm -hmm. And um, I had no job again. But I have to find to find another one. So, but it wasn't uh, finding another job. It wasn't so hard because um, with uh, this Italian, there were visitors always. Some visitors visitors came, coming there, so uh, they they I, I they knew me. Mm -hmm. So when they saw that place, it's like uh, we know you. You we know your service. So uh, if uh, they sell that place, you can come to our place to work there. So it wasn't so um, so hard for me. I got, I got another job, and. Uh, uh, that job was um, that place were using to bring some guests mm. to stay there. It was like um, holiday holiday homes. Mm. So um, one day, some visitors came there, and uh, they liked me. They said that you are a very good person. Mm. Yeah. So we have a job somewhere. Mm. We can offer you. I said, what job is that? I said, you can work in our country. Where? In mm. Switzerland. Oh. <laughs> so that is the beginning of coming mm. in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with these friends of mine, they uh, pay you everything. Mm. 
that I came to their country, mm. and I got a job in Switzerland. Mm. So in Switzerland, uh, in Switzerland, I started to think, yeah, uh, I don't know, but if it's nature, if it's mm. God, mm. then be, uh, she, he or she should be a very wonderful person. Mm. Because from nowhere, I rose up to this, um, mm. this step. Mm. So I have to do good even to other people. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So because uh, it's like uh, now I can open my fridge, everything is there. Mm. I sleep uh, in a good bed. Um, and uh, when I was a small boy, you know, I, I put it on shows when I was 15 years. So it's like I was working for 15 years, I worked on bare legs, uh, bare legs you know, without shoes. Now I have something. So myself, uh, apart from Dreamers Association, um, I have like uh, 10 children that I'm paying school fees or with my own money. Yeah, but the children are many. That's why I decided to create uh, the association so that I, I can get some friends uh, so we can help them in a good number. Yeah, and um, what I think, um, what I think is, if we have to change something, it's not, uh, you have a problem. If I give you money, I haven't helped you. And, uh, I should see what the problem is and to help you to come out from that problem. That should be a good help. So I decided not to give people money, but I decided if it's education, if it's uh, poverty, we can reduce this poverty or we can end the poverty if we shall educate the children. Because we are sure that if we educate them, they'll get some jobs and they'll change their lives. They'll change life of other generation, coming generation. So that is why I'm sticking in education. And um, I know, I believe in 10 years, we shall be, have changes in it. Of course. Yeah. I really like that, that you're focusing on the long-term change yeah because you know so many people they like to f it's often i don't want to be too hard on that but sometimes people when they do some projects which are supposed to help others often it's a little bit more about themselves yeah you know where it's like i want to feel good now so let's you know buy a tv for that family or something and it doesn't change anything besides yeah. i mean maybe a little bit but there's no permanent solution but that's a quick solution where i feel good i did something I, there's an interesting story I, I personally experienced uh, when I used to go sometimes to orphanages, yeah. Yeah, an orphanage, yeah. in Lithuania. And uh, I would talk to children there and I would try to motivate them. And uh, I learned uh, from other people around that uh, I, initially I thought maybe I should go during Christmas time. And one adult told me, don't go then. I was like, why not? And apparently because the children, they hate Christmas time because everybody suddenly decides to go visit them then. You know, everybody brings them gifts and they come and, and the children, they just get tired. They, they're, they're, they, there's too many visitors for them in such a short period. No, okay. And they ask, even the children ask, you know, so I was like, why can't those adults just, you know, separate the times and co come throughout the year rather than come for this mm. short period of time? Mm -hmm. But that showed me that so many times people are focused on the quick feel good solution it's like i will come to christmas during christmas i will feel good and i will feel like i made a difference but nothing is going to change yeah but but the permanent solutions most of the times they're the, the long ones they're the ones which you don't get you maybe get some glimpses of oh this is nice this is happening but you need patience and you need time and but those are the ones which will change so all of that said that's why I'm very excited about what you're doing. Thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> and and another, uh, yeah, we're still good. So and uh, another thing which I wanted to bring up uh, in regards to that is you mentioned if that's okay, it's not on record, but we don't need to mention names or anything. But mm -hmm. but you mentioned you worked in a similar organization in in, in a certain way. Yeah. Uh, where they're trying to make a difference in Kenya specifically, right? Yeah but you saw flaws behind their method, which inspired you to, to do your own thing. So can you tell about that? Okay, you know, um, 
we have a lot of organizations that are, are going to Africa to help. Okay, they have the name that they're helping. Yeah, and they're helping. But on how? How are they helping? You know, it's like um, if I come, you have a problem. You don't have you don't have food. I give you a packet of uh, of flour, a maize flour. You are going to spend it, and that's all. You know. But if uh, maybe you have a a, a land, and they want to help you, I will help you to do the agriculture so that you will get a lot of food. This is how we should focus the things. Yeah, But it's not that I come here, I help you in a, just a day, mm -hmm. and then that's all. Right. That's not, it's not a help. Right. Yeah, so what I am trying to look is, um, how will I finish the poverty? How will I end the, uh, the how do you call it, the um, not having food? is example yeah. so in this i thought of we don't we now in the weather in kenya it's like um we don't we don't understand because many years we have our, our, um, our ancestors mm -hmm. they were like uh, ah, on march is going to rain mm -hmm. but now if we are waiting for march raining mm -hmm. it, the rain maybe comes on june yeah. so we have a climate uh, changing mm -hmm. so we cannot stay there and hoping it will rain yeah and it might not rain. So what should we do on this? That's why we brought in the uh, uh, Dreamers Association, we, uh, we brought them the windmill to do uh, some boreholes so that we can do irrigations. So, so if we have the um, irrigation system, we, we shall not wait for, 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 for rain. We shall have water for irrigation. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to look is that what is the what is the help that we can manage uh, that people won't be staying there doing nothing. We can do something to get some to get something, you know. So as I have told you, uh, we are um, we have to look the roots of the thing so that we can pull it up mm -hmm. and make sure that we use it. Mm -hmm. You know, we are rich in, um, in maybe in, even in our soil is good. Mm -hmm. But the problem is if I use my hands manually to, um, to do agriculture, mm -hmm. I'll just do a, a small place, mm -hmm. you know. But we have the tractors because at the Dreamers Association, once I even we have a, a project to, um, to do the, um, the, the farming but we want to help people. If people, um, I don't, they don't have food, but if we do the farming and agriculture, we shall be helping people. We want to start with maybe 25 people, mm -hmm. families, mm -hmm. to, to dig for them with tractors. Mm -hmm. Like it's like uh, an acre that uh, is uh, 70 times 70. Mm -hmm. That is an acre. So every family we give it uh, an acre, we mm -hmm. plug them with um, the um, tractors. Mm -hmm. We give them uh, maybe the seeds. Mm -hmm. We help them for irrigation. Mm -hmm. And we understand that at the whole of this process, they'll have uh, more food. Okay. So if they have food, we shall have helped them. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I give you something to eat to the end. Then, so. Yeah. It's a permanent solution. Again, I really like that approach. And as we had our first meeting here in Lithuania, uh, I mentioned to you the, the metaphor that I liked for a long time. Mm -hmm. I think it's a metaphor from Confucian, from Confucius, the Chinese philosopher, uh, that give a man a fish and he will not be hungry for a day. Teach a man fishing and uh, he will that is it. be not hungry yeah. for a long time. Yeah. And I consider that it's kind of, I see like your superpower, and we, we kind of spoke about that too, that you've been uh, on both ends. Like maybe. Again, I, I don't know many, I haven't had the personal uh, contact with many of these projects, but I had um, some connection with some projects, and usually they're, like what we discussed before, they're yeah. a bit superficial. They try to help, but they don't always know how to, or sometimes they just want to look like they help. 
but but your superpower is that, uh, or that's how I call it, that you've been on both ends. You've been in that situation. You know it from the inside out, and so a solution to see for you a solution is it's much more clear. Yeah. So so that I think that's, that's yeah. a brilliant opportunity. And uh, quickly before I forget <laughs> to ask, uh, so. Uh, you mentioned some of the solutions you're looking at. Uh, could you name more? Because I know there's more that you're doing with the Dreamers Association. So there's uh, uh, digging wells. Digging wells. Then irrigation. Irrigation. And what, That's what's it. Next? The, the okay. farming. Yeah. Okay, we have the farming. We have um, we have um, uh, the education. Mm -hmm. Uh, we want to set even, we have a project even for the um, medication. You know, we have um, a lot of children are dying younger. Mm. And uh, what they miss is the, the proper medication. So we want to set even this to make sure that the um, people have the access in, medica in, in, in medicines. Mm. So. Our project is, is like um, we wanted to talk with a hospital. Mm. All those because we are doing even the ad adoption, the sponsoring of children. Mm. So in this uh, project, we sh we have a, a direct help from the um, sponsor to a, ch a child, mm. and we are asking them to pay our uh, uh, thirty euro or thirty Swiss francs in a month, uh, and this money are used to pay uh, school fees, and it's used to pay uh, two meals a day at school. So that sounds almost crazy to me, like, like, did I get that right? So 30 euros per month covers food every day plus education, is that? Yeah. That okay. Yeah. Okay, please continue. I just yeah, the 30 just... euros that uh, the sponsor is paying, right. it cops for the... Um, the, the, the school fees, uh -huh. cups for the um, two meals a day, for whole month. For whole month. Wow, yeah. that's great. For okay, whole month. Let's continue. <laughs> and um, first uh, medication. Mm -hmm. This means that um, uh, the, it's, the child is at school. Mm -hmm. He feels sick. Mm -hmm. um, we have a first aid for them. Mm -hmm. So uh, the teachers are. Um, to take the child to hospital, mm -hmm. and money is there to pay the f uh, the, the first uh, the first uh, medication. So if so, that's included in, in the yeah yeah it's included. Oh. The problem if maybe he continue to be uh, to be sick, mm -hmm. or maybe sure. this first medication has not worked, mm -hmm. we have to send him or her to uh, other hospital to mm -hmm. for a further medication. Mm -hmm. This the problem comes. Because the money that we have set yeah. is for fast, uh, fast aid, right. fast medication. Yeah. But uh, we always do this. If the, the uh, child is maybe sick, we have uh, paid for the fast medication, and um, he needs uh, some other medications. We are talking for the uh, with, with the sponsor. Mm -hmm. If he, he is or she is willing yeah. to pay something else. Then uh, it's okay. Mm -hmm. If it um, he or she can't, that comes the problem. Sure. Yeah. So we in this we have been saying maybe we shall find some sponsors that we right. in association. Mm -hmm. If we have yeah big sponsors. If we, in association we have um, we have a cash. Maybe uh, some people or some companies are. Are funding us, we have the cash. So it means that if the, even a child needs a, um, a further medication, we have the money. So the money are going to use to medicate the, the child. Yeah. You know, I, I like that system so much. I'm almost curious. <laughs> I don't want to get astray. I'm almost curious. What, how did you get come to that idea? But, but what, what I wanted to, to praise you on is uh, so so part of what I like investigating is how the human mind works and psychology and human behavior. Thank you, uh, social scientist. And <laughs> and and then when I look at your the like what's so attractive about this this method that you set up, I feel sometimes when you donate to some organization, like even like it's been a while since I saw the the 
the commercials of specifically in Africa, mm. they're showing you know, like the wells are being dug or something, and you can send money. And it feels like again, it's a one-time payment, or like I send you know, this five euros, and it, something happens somewhere or something, and I, I feel like I did it, and I'm done. But here, there's much more of a personal relationship, like because if I understand, so you're specifically supporting a single child uh, that that. Do you choose the child or do you get randomly? Or no, no, we don't choose the child because we have many child that, um, the children that um, they need help. Right. So we, have, we normally have a list with the children. Like uh, right now we have um, 32 children sponsored. Mm -hmm. But we have, we have still a long, a long list. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So we don't, uh, we don't um, it depends with the numbers that we have given. So it comes like from number one to maybe 100. Okay, so it's like a win So we are taking a, right, that, right. yeah. Well, still, what, what I like a lot is that there's a personal connection, there's, and there's a continuation that you know, and I, I would imagine, and I would guess that you can even see maybe the achievements of the child. Like I'm sure you, yeah, yeah. if you're a sponsor, probably you get to know like, oh, he went to school today or yeah. he got the books and he got that. Like like you can really feel you're really making a direct difference and, and you have a follow through versus you send the money in yeah. somewhere and maybe something happens. Even we have, a, we are saying every sponsor has a right because in Kenya we have, um, we have um, in a year, we have a term, three terms. It means that um, from January to um, April, then they go for, for um, they stay at home for holiday for uh, one month, mm -hmm. and then they repeat three months, then uh, one, one month at home. So it's like uh, if they're ending the, um, the, the first term, they're doing examination. So there is some results, a report, that comes so we are we always sending them the reports to the sponsors so they know they always looking their children how are they going on in school you know we are sending them pictures always pictures we can they have uh, even um, a direct contact if maybe i'm uh, in kenya i can call them with whatsapp video and uh, uh, talking to them oh, yeah so we, you have a direct um, a direct contact with this uh, this child yeah such a brilliant idea i'm, I'm just i just cannot go without asking like what inspired you to specifically come up with this type of structure like system okay what uh, inspired me most is um is uh, how i see or how my life has been mm -hmm. you know as i have passed uh, a very hard situation um it ex inspired me that uh, even even other people have the right to do something uh, to of something you know in this world so it's like um, I formed this association, then I look for this, the sponsors, even the sponsors, they have the right yeah. to know what is happening with this children. So if you, uh, you, uh, you sponsor a, a child mm -hmm. and you have a direct contact, mm -hmm. you are sure, you are 100 sure that the boy or the girl is going to school, yeah. you are sure that your money is not going to lost. Exactly. You, you are doing, you are really doing something yeah. and maybe Tomorrow you have funding, you have a sponsor, uh, this uh, child, mm -hmm. and uh, in 10 years, he becomes maybe a lawyer. Right. Uh, you are proud of yourself. <laughs> maybe you are going to see the child. See what yeah. Became of him. Yeah. That's just, yeah, that's amazing. And uh, because that's one of the reasons, again, why uh, just, this is the questioning podcast, so I will bring the questioning <laughs> sometimes then. Uh, sometimes when, when I would see the, the kind of the traditional model of, send five euros for this or for that. I Sometimes I would do that, but oftentimes I would feel, I wouldn't feel, I would feel cautious about that because again, as, you, as we discussed, you don't really know where the yeah. money is going to, or, yeah. or, or I always, always had this idea of, I, I always feel like I want permanent solutions, like that teach, him, teach a person to fish, mm -hmm. uh, fishing versus give a fish. And I would always feel, well, I can send five euros and, and That's all. have no idea what happened and feel uh, and pretend I made a difference, or I can just really try to make a difference. But here, uh, you, you do send a certain amount of money, but then you really feel and you see that yeah. there's a difference. So right away, I can say that uh, knowing more or less how your system works, uh, I'm like, 
99% sure that I want to become part of it, at least already by starting by supporting a child. Yeah. So, so what's, uh, what's the next thing I need to know or do so to do that? How does it work? Okay. Um, the first thing is to be ready okay. to, to do it, you know? Sure. So it's like, uh, you know, you want to do, or you want to find the, pro, or you want to sponsor a child. Yeah. It's like, yeah. We have the we have um, the, our projects, mm -hmm. so depends on you which projects you, projects you want to to, um, to fund. Mm -hmm. So uh, do you want to um, sponsor a child, mm -hmm. or do you want to 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 fund uh, irrigation um, mm -hmm. uh, systems, or? Uh, do you want uh, okay we have even you know I haven't uh, tell you that okay. um, you know in Kenya we have a uh, very many talented children mm. Mm. so we thought about this even we say we say okay why do we lose the talents of these children so we as dreamers we created um, we want to create a center where all these talented children will have a Assess mm -hmm. um, can come to that center if they are singers, uh, for example. They want to uh, to to sing. They want to be calm singers. Mm -hmm. We shall have some teachers mm -hmm. so that they can follow them step by step uh, to make sure that he, he or she becomes mm -hmm. a singer. This mm -hmm. children, because uh, from singing. We have, we can create a, a, a job. We have a, a lot of uh, a very famous singers and they earn a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So why should we lose these chances of these children? We have some actors in Africa, mm -hmm. but the problem that they lose this talent because no one or nowhere mm -hmm. they can go to assess or to learn more about that. So the dreamers uh, wants to set this uh, center, and it should be um, it sh will be called um, uh, Christian uh, Christian Children Center. Mm. It means that uh, we shall be having the children. They, there shall be some teachers mm. that they will follow them. They will uh, um, follow them uh, system uh, systematically mm -hmm. to up to when they will achieve their, their, their goals. Mm. So we have even these projects. Mm. So if even someone wants to, 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 um, to help um, a child in a talent way, uh, because maybe uh, yeah, he or he hears that he knows how to sing, he has the voice, or he is talented in, um, in acting movies like, like, like that, or he is talented in dancing. So, but you know, the problem is that um, I, we as an association, without having maybe the, the financially, it is very difficult to bring all these talents up. So we, we are looking even sponsors in this, if maybe in this, um, we want to bring up this, um, these talents, we have to get some sponsors even in this. So that's what I, oh, that's what I was um, explaining. Yes, yeah, I, 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 I forgot to tell you that before. So um, first of all, you become ready to, 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 to sponsor. For example, you want to sponsor a child. What you need, you just need is to the, it's a, I'll be needing your mm -hmm. contacts, mm -hmm. and this is a phone number, email address, and uh, your address where you live, mm -hmm. because I need an address where you live, because I'll be sending you some physical pictures mm -hmm. that I'll take maybe from Africa, I send you directly. Mm -hmm. I need your mails because maybe I'll be not able to maybe to send you the letters, but yeah. I will... Sure. I will write you some mails. Yeah. I'll need your number because we shall be in touch. Mm -hmm. Whatever whatever is happening in Kenya, I'll be informing you. Mm -hmm. So the phone is very easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, this is the process. Mm -hmm. 
So I get to um, your, your, your address and um, contacts uh, like that. And then we, we move forward. Yeah. Um, out of curiosity, and this includes myself and anyone else who, who, who would be interested to do that, yeah. is there some type of a commitment that, that you, you're bound to, or is it flexible? Or We don't have any commitment, mm -hmm. because as I'm doing the things with my heart, mm -hmm. I don't force someone to do, but I just want him or her to feel mm -hmm. that he is or she is helping. So, not any commitments. Yeah. That's great as well. Yeah. I think otherwise, it can be a bit scary. You're like, no, no. oh my gosh, I'm going to do this for the rest of <laughs> no, my no, life. No. And you can, but you, know, you never know no, no. Um, how it's going to end. So, so, great. So, whenever I'm ready to do that, I just send you the information. And yeah. What about, so we know each other, so it's going to be easy for me. What about people who are watching this and they're inspired to be part of the Dreamers Association? Okay, all are welcome. We have our. Um, our website uh, page mm -hmm. that is uh, www.thedreamers.ch um, mm -hmm. and uh, we have uh, our um, facebook page mm -hmm. associazione the dreamers mm -hmm. and uh, we have even emails because we have even a booklets i have uh, uh, we have even booklets so if you would, you want to get us mm -hmm. you can get us whatever Whatever. Is, is there all the information? Is there? In, is it in English as well? Is because I know the primary language is because you're based in the uh, Italian. Uh, yeah. Part of Switzerland. yeah. It's, your primary language is Italian, but is there enough English to get around? Yeah, we uh, we have created some booklets mm -hmm. in English. I have some here even. Yeah. I'll so. That later. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. And the website is in English as well? Um, the website is in Italian. Uh. The, but I have not something because, you know, the one who did um, the, the, the website mm -hmm. is Italian. He, you know, he speaks Italian. Right. So he couldn't do it in English. Mm. But uh, I have noticed that if you use the uh, Chromo. Ah, there's the Google Translate? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I use that. But we are looking forward for to to to, to put in even the English language in that website. That'd be great. Thank yeah, you, you should. You're starting to get out there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Next question about that is English language. Okay. So, but otherwise, uh, uh, maybe I can leave, or there, or people can find your email, I'm sure, on the website and, and just write to you directly with all the questions they have. And, yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 In uh, website or yeah, our um, Facebook page, okay. we have our emails and uh, yeah. What else did I want to ask? Just think for one Oh, I, I still have at least the one more, one more two questions. Yeah. Before I, until I remember, is there anything you wanted to, that we bring up, or like any subject or, or something to share, or we just continue the conversation? Uh, right now, no. Here okay, we can continue. Yeah. yeah. So I'll just. just okay, yeah, I remember. Okay. <clears throat> So, the um, crowdfunding, one of the reasons why you're here in Lithuania, aside from a wonderful holiday, is you're considering to start the crowdfunding. Uh, this talk is probably going to come out in about three weeks, two weeks. Uh, so, you know, it doesn't come out like the next day. So I'm not sure if something will be already set up or not but so what's what's the intention with the crowdfunding so that one day that when it's there how what it's about and how people could get involved with the crowdfunding okay in the crowd uh, funding okay. people they can um, they can uh, donate their their how can i say finances? their finances to our um, dreamers association mm -hmm. We welcome everyone, mm -hmm. every race, even every gender is welcomed in the Dreamers Association. Mm -hmm. We want to work together to the whole world mm -hmm. so that we make sure every child gets his or her rights. Yeah. 
So it will be set up sooner or later, like a specific crowdfunding where people can just go online and... Um, yeah, we'll be sending uh, in next days. Mm. We, we, shall, uh, we shall do it. Yeah. So I'll keep the audience updated when that comes up. <laughs> uh, and uh, so... So slowly wrapping up, uh, I'm going to my last question, and because I mentioned the key word for this podcast is questioning, and uh, one one more thing I was curious to ask you about. Yes, there's uh, something we discussed about, and I know from general now that okay, is that there's clearly there's obviously differences in the mentality of uh, people in uh, Europe and people in, in Africa. Yes, uh, one of them which we even sang yesterday, the Akuna Matata. <laughs> Akuna Matata. <laughs> uh, so I have ideas of what the answer might be, but, but I definitely want to hear it right from, uh, straight from you. So what's, when you look at the European culture, and specifically you spoke about Switzerland, I lived in Switzerland for a few years as well, so I definitely know what you mean. Yeah. Uh, people tend to be quite conservative there, a bit cold, a bit distant. Uh, probably different from what you're used to getting. Yeah. So when you're when you're living, let's say, in Switzerland, uh, and you're looking at the culture and the mentality, and you're questioning, like, why do you, why are they doing this? Why are they why are they not doing that? So what what are the main questions that come to you? What are, what makes you question the culture that you feel could be a bit different? Okay, you know, I um, grew up in um, African culture, mm-hmm. and. Um, uh, during my my child uh, period, it was like uh, you know we are in happiness in Africa. Mm-hmm. So the first thing is being happy. Mm-hmm. If you want to live in a good way, you should be happy yourself. Mm-hmm. And um, I would like to tell you that uh, even um, we are believers. We are God-fearing peoples in Kenya. So we believe that maybe if I don't have something today, God will provide for me tomorrow. So I don't have to be be stressed in life. I should be courage to know that everything happens I said for a reason? Yeah, for a reason, yeah, exactly. For a reason. So, if maybe today I don't have something to eat, God will provide for me tomorrow. I shouldn't be uh, sad or upset of these things. Yeah, there are normal things which are happening in this world. So, like me, I've been uh, without food for three days in my life, uh, without eating anything. But I didn't lose the courage of living. Because the first thing is the life. It's a precious. Because you won't, you won't get it somewhere. Life is precious. So if I'm good, I have to show the happiness. I'm in a culture that uh, I see some people, I like, greet them, I'm being happy, even if I don't have anything, I'm being happy because uh, um, the life that I have is precious, it's wonderful, it's great. So I should be happy for that. But if I come maybe in Europe, in Switzerland, I see people are very depressed. Why this for? What is for? We should be. We should learn how to be happy, because the first thing in your life is the happiness, and the other things comes later. Yeah, yeah. So I would urge everyone to be happy in this world. You know. <laughs> and uh, starting from that, I think that's probably the last question, uh, like a continuation of what you just spoke. So, yeah. so when you look at people specifically in Switzerland, but I think it's a good representation of many countries in Europe. Yeah. Uh, does, is, is it strange for you sometimes to see how much we have uh, like abundance of things? Like, you know, sometimes I, I make myself think about that and then just appreciate that, wow, you know, we have electricity, we have 
the heating, well obviously we have cold weather too, but we have heating and nobody that I know is starving. It's just, there's so much good things. Education is so accessible and we just don't appreciate it as, yeah. as a nation. Is that, is that strange for you? That is very, very strange. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's strange, it's strange because maybe it's like maybe let's say a child here. Yeah. Uh, he has everything, maybe the things to play with, as like uh, cars, like, uh, and still needs a lot. In Africa, these things are not happening. Maybe uh, a child doesn't have anything, have to, to play with the sand, have to play with the, the, the like that. But yeah, a child has everything, but still maybe keeping on asking for other many things. Coming to adults, you have everything you guys here, you know? You have everything. But uh, the problem that I see with you is you are always depressed in this. You are always uh, upset. I, I wonder why, you know? I always ask myself, why? If food is, a, you have a lot of food. If um, you have everything in you, what you need next? It's crazy. We don't have these things in Africa, but still we can. We we share the love. We 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 we, we talk to each other. We we laugh to each other. But these things I don't see here. You have everything, but you, the happiness is not in you. This is the problem. We are here, um, all um, human beings, and we should feel that uh, everyone is uh, important, and it's like we have to share the love that God has given us. It's brilliant to hear you say that, and uh, as I mentioned, sometimes I make myself think about that and appreciate the things I have, but it's but it's, in our environment, in our culture, it's, it's so uncommon that it's almost difficult to do. Uh, but something that, to, to put even more of a dot on what you said, uh, our mutual friend Yeva, who, through whom I know you and invited you here, yeah. uh, she, I, so I haven't been to Africa myself yet, uh, but I have the impression that she's absolutely right, that when she went there, she, she saw that you know, most of the people she met technically have way less uh, things or access to opportunities but this than than us in Europe but they seem to be more happy yeah and that you yeah. can concur that is exactly true. what happening in Africa you know? which is crazy I mean in, in a good way but it's, it's so interesting and I, I feel like we could learn as a culture yeah we could learn from that that, that we should appreciate much more what we have and and share with those who don't have as much. So yeah. again, like, you're, you're running a good, a good project. <laughs> um, so slowly uh, making a final wrap up, yeah. uh, summarizing, I, um, um, Okay. So, uh, I don't want to force the, the, the word too much. I'm still getting used to this new podcast of the having the theme subject as questioning. Yes. So just summarizing and reflecting on everything you spoke and your story yeah. seems to me the way questioning influenced your life. You questioned your education in your childhood. You asked yourself, why shouldn't I study and work for more and try to do more? Uh, you questioned the traditional method of the kind of supporting projects yeah. uh, specifically directed to Kenya. How they run things and, and the questioning of that inspired you to new and brilliant ideas and big change. And uh, yeah, I think I think this is a, a, your story and your project is such a good example of um, of how not taking things for granted and, and looking yeah. at how things can be improved brings can bring to wonderful big things. Yeah. Well, good. So thank you so much for spending your time. I have a feeling this is not the last time we are on camera and record. Yeah, uh, it's not last time. So, yeah, but, yeah. But thank you. It's, uh, thank you so much. Pleasure.